Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about future proof dependency management in JavaScript and TypeScript projects. My name is Olavi Hapala, and maybe a couple of words about me before I start. Um, I'm a software developer at Futures, where I focus on web performance and accessibility at my work. And I'm also one of the organizers of Tech Weeklies, which is this event that we're having right now. You can find my blog and my GitHub account and follow me on Twitter. And please note that the first character in my Twitter account name is a zero because the version with O was not available and nothing else that I wanted to use was available. And as you may have heard or may know me, so. On my free time, I actually like to go and cut some down some trees as a hobby and as a side business. So that's what I do when I get fed up with the JavaScript NPM world. Um, but yeah, let's not talk about that now. So let's talk about NPM and let's first talk about NPM in an ideal world, how it's intended to work, what it's intended to do. And um, so as probably all of us know, NPM stands for Node Package Manager. It's the package manager that is used in JavaScript projects, TypeScript projects, even in like Lambdas. You don't even need to have a large project. You can use it to install dependencies in a JavaScript project, whatever the size of the project is. There are different package managers as well, such as NPM. Yarn version one and Yarn version two. And out of these, my favorite is Yarn version one. In NPM world, you define your dependencies, your project dependencies in package.json, a file called package.json. And then in that same file, you define other metadata about the project, such as the author and the name of the project, whether it's public and all kinds of stuff, configuration and metadata. And in NPM world, in an ideal world, everyone is following semantic versioning, which means that versions are defined as major dot minor dot patch. And due to this, because everyone is following it, no accidental breaking changes happen because you know when a package a dependency has been upgraded with a breaking change and you, you are prepared to make some larger changes to your code. Then there's there are these log files. NPM uses package log.json and yarn uses yarn.log. And these files contain the exact versions that you installed when you ran package uh, npm install or yarn in that project. So it saves the version and the name uh, source, the registry, and some other information about the package. The, it's so sort of which checks that the package was not tampered with uh, once you installed it. And those are useful files. And then you can configure your package manager using a file called .npmrc, uh, where you can have different configurations that is useful when you commit that file to the repository, then everyone will have the same configuration. But then, hey, let's be honest, let's talk about the reality and why npmpolice.com exists and what's wrong with the npm world. And if you haven't heard about npmpolice.com, go check it out. I just love it. I just love the website. I haven't, I have nothing to do with it. I haven't created it, but still, I just love it, everything about it. And I'm actually using it and I also have yarn please in my ZSH RC in my RC file. So let's talk about what's wrong with the NPM ecosystem and why, basically why I'm doing this talk. If everything, everything was great, I don't know if there was any point of making this presentation. So as probably most of us have experienced, when you start developing a project, you run npm install and then you wait for minutes when it's downloading half of the internet and there are just damn too many dependencies. That's a fact. And then another fact is that package authors are not following the semantic versioning always. They might release 
breaking changes, but then they, for some reason, think that they don't want to bump the major version because it sounds so scary or something. I don't know. It's based on the contract. Basically, semantic version should be thought about as a contract that you promise as an author that, hey, this was just a minor version. It's backward compatible. It doesn't break anything. And then if you change an API, if you remove something or something like that, then it's a breaking change. And then transitive dependencies change and break things randomly, or it, at least it feels like randomly because you don't want you don't want things to break down suddenly. And one of the issues with npm, in my opinion, is that by default npm and yarn they install dependencies with the caret in the version name, such as preacher caret. 1.19.1 and this allows npm the package manager to install dependencies starting from this version release zero and all the way up to but not including 2.0 so the next all the way up to the next break um, i mean major version but then not the next breaking version so if everyone was following the semantic versioning, this would be fine. There would be no issues with it. But um, since people are not following semantic versioning, then things may change, break even in those major, minor versions, I mean. And one of the issues that I dislike is that you can't have comments in JSON. So in package JSON, you can't comment why we need a dependency, why this is sort of why is this exact version here? Why can't we upgrade it or stuff, stuff like that? And then there are these occasional fires that suddenly come up. And um, so what I mean with these are, of course, security issues. Um, and then, of course, these happen because people blindly install and execute code from the internet. And a extreme example of this is MPX where you literally execute, download and execute code from the internet. And similarly to NPM, you just download random code from somewhere and then you run it in your application and even deploy it to all your users. Um, and there has been cases where the house of cards that the NPM ecosystem is has collapsed. Um, one of them was the left pad case in 2016. So one of the authors and a company called uh, one author of a couple of or like few quite many open source libraries and then a company got into a fight about a package name and in the end the author the open source author got mad and just deleted all of his packages from the NPM registry. And this was including LeftPad, which is a silly small utility that was used by millions of projects. Well, yeah, I guess it was millions. And it broke multiple projects in a way the whole NPM ecosystem was down for a while because so many projects were depending on this small utility function that patch a string from the left. And during that time, NPM didn't have any fail safe or like any guard against these things happening. So anyone who figured out that this package name is now free, they were able to publish a page in that name. But luckily in this case, there was an, a fr friendly, friendly developer who did this. So there was nothing, I think, too serious happening. It was just non-existing for a few hours. And here's a longer blog post about it by NPM. Um, and there was just recently, there has been others as well, but I'll just highlight a couple of these. Just recently in April, there was this case, is Promise, which was a package where the author accidentally published a broken version of the package. And he actually wrote a really nice postmortem about it and why it happened. But the thing is that super many packages were depending on this silly is promise package just that checks if something is a promise. And actually, I, I checked in our the current project I'm working at. We actually had that package in our 
node modules as well. Some some of our dependencies was depending on this. So what should you avoid to do in the NPM world? Um, and these these examples that I tell now, what to avoid, are actually based on a real world case at work where I was trying to work on a we had a we had a production issue in a project that we hadn't been super actively developing and maintaining and most importantly we hadn't been upgrading the dependencies lately and um, then we had to fix a production issue but the application didn't start locally so we had to do something and when we started looking into the issue there was no log file in the repo um, there was no npm rc and all the dependencies were of course then defined with uh, the correct so and it didn't work locally so what you and i actually myself have a new work laptop right now so i didn't have a old version of the dependencies on my laptop i had to install them again based on the package json and since package json allowed range of dependencies to be installed so from those dependencies upwards until like minor, minor versions upgrades were allowed to be installed. So then when I installed the dependencies, nothing worked locally. But then weirdly it worked in test and dev and prod. Even like the same code if I checked out the there was didn't work locally. So something weird was something fishy was going on. And the reason for this was that the node modules were cached in S3. So we had set up a upload to node modules in order to speed up the deployment or like the build, because you don't have to download the node modules from the internet, from the NPM registry during build time. But this actually turned out to be like making the build slower than downloading them from the internet. And it also caused us trouble in this case because it was working with it didn't upgrade the dependencies it didn't reinstall them it used the old versions that were fine based on the version versions defined in package JSON and there was no log file so there was not nothing nothing forcing npm to install a certain version so what i did um, when trying to fix this situation was to try to fix reinstall packages from log file but there was no log file so at first you had to run npm install to get the log file or yarn but in this case we were using npm um, so i ran npm install to get the log file and then after that i ran npm install for all the dependencies again so that the npm picks the correct version from the log file and then updates the package, package JSON to match that. So at least that was closer to then to reality when also using the fixed version from that point on. It didn't work. Then number two, what I tried was to, I got a zip file from a colleague with a functioning set of node modules where he said it was working on his machine. And then based on that, I tried to reconstruct the I'll get the application working in a working state, but no, it didn't work. And then in the end, we just figure out we had to install a missing dependency and upgrade random dependencies until it started working. So this was kind of a pain in the ass and something I want to avoid in the future and something that I want to share with you, like what to do in order to avoid this kind of dependency or maintenance hell in JavaScript or TypeScript projects in the future. So in my opinion, in my view, NPM world is like the ocean and you're swimming there. You have to swim in order to not drown. Um, yeah, and you have to try to stay up and not <laughs> sink in the water. Um, so what I would recommend to do is to use yarn instead of npm uh, if you can choose and I, by yarn i mean yarn 
version one. But of course, if you have a project that has been using NPM from the get go, all the instructions are using NPM, the log file is NPM log file, then a package log, I mean, then don't bother. There's not that many differences, but at least I think yarn log files work a bit more reliably than uh, NPM log files. And yarn is, in my view, a bit faster than NPM. And there is this nice utility called yarn why, where you can ask ask yarn why it has installed the dependency. So you can, for example, ask yarn why left that? Why? And then yarn will uh, tell you, based on the log file, it knows what dependency installed left pad as a dependency. And then always commit log file and also use it in your CI. Um, use yarn install frozen log file or npm CI to respect or force force the CI to respect the log file. Use fixed versioning. Um, add a file called npm rc save exact equals true to your project repository so that everyone will have it. And only upgrade dependencies when explicitly wanted. Don't allow NPM to upgrade dependencies automatically. And when you upgrade dependencies, use separate commits per upgraded package and include the log file in those. And this is why, and why this? It's because if you do this and you upgrade, say, 10 packages, and then after you have upgraded those, your project doesn't compile, it doesn't test fails or the build doesn't work. Then you can use git bisect, which is a really, really underrated tool for using binary search to find quickly the the broken the commit that broke your build. And you can even automate that if you have something clearly like if your tests fail or your build fail, you can just use git bisect and tell it to run a certain comment. And if that fails, then it finds the broken comment. And then you can just have a cup of coffee and wait for Git to do all the hard work. I seriously recommend looking up Git Bisect if you haven't, haven't tried it before. It's super powerful. And I would recommend using doing a monthly dependency upgrade um, or even more often if you can afford that. And when you're doing a project, always consider whether you actually need a dependency or should you implement something yourself, you might save in the long term, you might actually save time by implementing something yourself. And then if you're a package author, there are a couple of points what I recommend you to do. Please, please, please follow the semantic versioning. Don't ruin the other developers or the open source consumers' lives or days or weeks or weekends or evenings for that matter. By if you publish packages like versions that are actually breaking, but you don't annotate them as breaking changes. Follow NPM audit and security warnings and make sure your packages are up to date and doesn't contain security uh, vulnerabilities. Require login and two-factor authentication for publishing a new version of your package to NPM. This is in order to avoid any anyone to gain access to your package and publishing a new version, malicious version, or deleting it or something. And if you can use code packages, this is something I failed to do when I published my first NPM package. I didn't use code package. It would have been so much nicer to use. Uh, so scope package means that it's at username or at organization slash package name. So then you don't end up having any collisions with names with the other packages or any confusion. Um, and please avoid publishing unnecessary packages. If you're the author of left, left or uh, considering publishing something like left bad or is array or is positive integer, please don't. If you can fit your package that you're about to publish in a tweet, then why not just tweet it? People can Look at look it up from your tweet and use it. And seriously, I mean this. This is a package called npm. Um, I mean is array, and it's a, basically a one-liner that checks if if the argument 
passed to this function. Oh wait, yeah, it checks if yeah it uses array is array. What does it even do? But anyways, it's a one-liner that checks if something is array. I, I really had a hard time believing these numbers when I was logging. I I was checking that okay, it has thirty-one thousand weekly downloads, and then I realized it's thirty-one. 0.3 million weekly downloads and there are 417 packages that depend on this package and nine versions of this has been published 132 bytes of code maybe that's where i want to end this presentation please try to be a good citizen don't publish anything garbage and probably you might want to follow some of the recommendations I just told you. Thank you.